Chapter 9. I came, I saw, I conquered. Caesar was not pleased by the, by the king's gruesome offering. He was angry. Caesar stormed Ptolemy's palace, trapping the king inside. This angered the residents of Alexandria. Egypt was independent. How dare a Roman general hold their leader? Prisoner inside his own palace. Deadly riots broke out. But Caesar wouldn't leave until Egypt's civil war was settled. A king as wealthy and powerful as Egypt could be dangerous to Rome if it remained unstable. Caesar wished to settle the king and the queen's differences quickly. He sent for Cleopatra, but Ptolemy's guard stopped her from meeting the Roman ruler. So one night, Cleopatra devised a plan. She had a servant deliver her to Caesar's room, wrapped up in a rug. Caesar was so impressed with her cleverness. Some say he fell in love with her immediately. Many Egyptians love Cleopatra too. Caesar realized that Cleopatra was the better choice to rule the kingdom. Caesar summoned Ptolemy. The young king was surprised to find his sister sitting next to Caesar in his own palace. When he realized that Caesar was taking Cleopatra aside, he ran to the crowd gathered outside, threw off his crown and cried. Caesar assured the Egyptians that his intentions were pure. All he wanted was peace for Egypt. He proposed that brother and sister rule together. Meanwhile, Ptolemy's troops were closing in. The Egyptian navy attacked Caesar's ship in the harbor. City residents watched the dramatic naval battles from the rooftops. Egyptians from all over poured into Alexandria to fight the Romans. Caesar's troops fought from house to house in the city streets surrounding the palace. This was not the type of battle Caesar was, was used to fighting, but he held off the Egyptians. Eventually, ships loaded with the soldiers from Caesar's army arrived on Nile River. Egyptian forces moved to the same area of the Nile. In the battle that followed, Caesar was victorious and Ptolemy drowned. Caesar returned to Alexandria to name Cleopatra Queen of Egypt. Caesar had been in Egypt for months. He'd been at war for a decade. It was time for a vacation, so he and Cleopatra took a leisurely month-long cruise down the Nile. But even vacation had purpose for Caesar. 400 Roman ships sailed with them. This sent a clear message to the people of Egypt. Mess with your queen and suffer at the hands of Caesar. Before Caesar left Egypt, Cleopatra gave birth to a son, to a baby boy, Caesar's only son. She named him Ptolemy the 15th, but the Egyptians called him Caesarian or Little Caesar. Caesar traveled through the Middle East on his way back to Rome, settling disputes, collecting payments, and putting down rebellions in the provinces long along the way. After squashing one billion, one rebellion, he uttered a phrase that would become forever famous, Veni Vidi Visi, I came, I saw, I conquered. Once back in Rome, Caesar could finally repay his troops for their years of loyal service. They were given handsome bonuses and provided new land all around the Republic. Caesar also point, appointed some of his soldier, old soldiers and tribal allies to the Senate. Lavish parades were organized by for Caesar's homecoming. The Romans were amazed by the mountains of treasure and exotic animals from Caesar's conquest. No one in Rome had ever seen a giraffe before. His great enemy in Gaul, Verzingetorix, was taken out of jail and paraded through the streets with other prisoners of war before being executed. Following Roman tradition, a slave whispered into Caesar's ear during the celebrations, Remember, you are mortal, he told the great ruler. Despite this, Caesar probably felt like a god after all he'd accomplished. He declared himself for dictator for 10 more years. Consuls would still be elected, but Caesar would always speak first in the Senate meeting. And his word was law. It seemed that nothing could stop Julius Caesar. The dictator left Rome one last time to defeat Pompey's remaining supporters in Spain. 
With the help of his grandnephew Octavius, he was successful. He held another celebration upon his return, but this parade did not impress Romans. Caesar's other wars had seemed justified. Now it seemed like he was just slaughtering fellow Romans. The Senate, probably terrified at him, gave Caesar a throne made of solid gold. The month of Quintilus was officially renamed, renamed in his honor. Julius or July, Caesar's birthday was proclaimed a public holiday for all time, and he was named dictator for life. Julius Caesar once said, the Republic is nothing, just a name without substance or form. It appeared now that the Roman Republic, almost 500 years after his birth, was truly dying.